On today's episode, we found out if our Mustang GT has a healthy engine. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chad Luke with you again for another installment of Project Rich Running Pony. That's our 1989 Ford Mustang GT, who happens to be running extremely rich. But before we start diving into that, looking into other possible sources, I want to baseline this engine, make sure everything's running as it should. And one of my favorite tests to do that, to just get a kind of quick and easy overall health check on the engine is to perform a compression test. Now compression tests are pretty straightforward. They won't find all your issues if you're having issues here or still having issues that the compression test doesn't reveal. You can move forward for a leak down test, but overall compression tests are a really great way to tell you how healthy your engine is. So we're gonna perform one of those, test all eight cylinders. On top of that, we're also gonna do a fuel pressure test. Since we are having fueling issues, I just wanna see if the right amount of pressure is getting from our fuel pump to our rail and thusly our injectors and into the engine. So we're gonna do those two pretty basic but very important diagnostic tests today. So it's gonna be a good one. Let's get in the garage and get some work done. Before we dive into diagnosing, fixing issues with this 1989 Ford Mustang GT, I wanna do a compression test on this engine just to make sure we're starting off with a healthy block. I think that's a great way to start when you have a new project that you don't know the history of and way better than starting to like throw parts at it, which we don't do here, is getting to know if that engine is healthy. Now compression tests, they can be contested. Uh, you get on the forums, you got the people that say it has to be done a certain way, it has to be a hot engine, all of that. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm just gonna do it the way I've done it. I've done it on, I don't even know, gotta be in the hundreds almost, of different types of engines, different vehicles, and I've always done cold compression tests the first reason being, it's way easier not to burn your hands. I kind of like that. That's a cool thing to me. Pun intended, I guess. Or unintended, but accurately placed. But I do like to do it cold. Yes, the compression numbers will be lower than what you get with a hot compression test. And the reason being is, a cold compression test is more raw. It really will show you if there is some kind of mechanical failure, whether it be piston rings or head gasket, because when an engine heats up, thermal expansion causes the numbers to go up, obviously, for compression, and can sometimes mask issues. You know, how often are you working on a car that or have an issue car where it runs horribly when cold, whether it's hard start, idle issues, acceleration, throttle, whatever. Cold engines tend to have way more issues than hot engines. So that's the reason I do a cold compression test. Now numbers aren't the biggest thing, but in general, you're looking for nothing more than a 10% delta. Now that's a 10% difference in your lowest compression number, say on a cylinder, you know, cylinder one versus cylinder eight for example. You don't want to have anything greater than 10% across all your cylinders. So if they all fall within that margin, you have a healthy engine. Unless it's super, super low, then you have like probably a head gasket issue if it's affecting every cylinder. Compression tests tell you a lot about a car, the health of the engine. You know, you can place whether it's piston rings, which you can test by putting oil down in the cylinder, running the compression test again and seeing a higher number. If you see a uniform low compression across like one of the heads, so whether it be the driver's side of the engine, you can tell it's probably a head gasket issue or something that affects multiple cylinders, like a complete head gasket failure. Compression tests are so useful, but they're also such a heartbreaker sometimes because it's a lot of it's a lot of risk, right? Like you're gonna find out how healthy your engine is, but that's where we're starting. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of doing an accurate compression test on a Mustang GT from this era. So this is a 1989. Now before you start your compression test, there are two things you, well, a few things on this car you really need to do. You need to make sure fuel is not going into the engine and you need to make sure spark is not going into the engine. You don't want both of those things occurring when you're just trying to do a compression test. So on this era of Mustang GT, you will find the fuel pump relay under the driver's seat, believe it or not. To access it, you don't really have to remove the seat. You should be able to access it if you slide the seat all the way forward, come from the back seat, and you can actually disconnect it that way. Or you can see the green connector I removed from the relay. It's just as easy as popping that. You gotta pry it open and pull it off of the actual relay itself, and that is the fuel pump relay on the Mustang GT. Now we're ready to go under the hood. After we remove the ability for the engine to get fuel 
by doing the fuse or the by doing the fuel pump relay under the driver's seat, it's time to get the spark out of the engine. The best way to do that is to find where your distributor gets power. This little clip here. Pry up. It's a little bit of a squeeze with that coolant hose right there, but it should pop out like that. Go easy on it. Again, 30 plus year old plastic you want to be friendly with. So now we've eliminated spark and fuel from the engine. It is time to do our compression test. And what we're gonna do for this is I'll go one spark plug at a time, screw in my compression tester, crank the engine, see what the compression is, log it down. I'll come up with a little sheet showing the engine diagram, and then we'll go through all eight cylinders and see how healthy or unhealthy this 5.0 is. So let's get this started. It's a little bit of an awkward angle to get these out, these spark plugs. You're gonna use a 5 8 inch socket. You wanna use a spark plug socket with the rubber insulator in there that kind of holds on to the plug. Uh, you run the risk of breaking them if you don't use a socket like that. So again, a little tricky to get on them. The spark plugs kind of face towards the rear of the engine, which is kind of not the way I would have designed it, but either way, we shouldn't be torqued in too hard. Yeah, this is gonna take some time. Nice and easy does it, guys. We don't need to be breaking anything. These spark plugs look new to me. We'll check it out when we pull it out and see the condition. Again, opportunity to check out your spark plugs. That's always good. Oh, now that's gonna be an issue. Can you guys guess what's going on in this engine? Just look at that. That is spark plug number five. It'll be the front most on the driver's side of the vehicle. What are you guys thinking about the condition of this spark plug? Are you happy if you pull this? Because this looks like a pretty new plug. I'm going to do two things. Check out if this is the right plug for this vehicle. I'm going to cross-reference the part. And then I'm going to see some other plugs and see what we're dealing with here. But yep, you're not wanting to see that. Well, clearly we're running super rich based on that super sooty spark plug. That's not a good sign. It wasn't wet, so it's not oil. So I do like that. I'd rather see a rich condition versus like some kind of internal oil leak. Oil pushing up past the pistons, never good, and getting on the spark plug. So we're hoping this is just purely a tuning issue at this point, but we're gonna do the compression test regardless. Now I'm gonna plug in my compression tester. Nothing fancy, just your standard issue compression tester. You'll plug it in, make sure of course you have the same size fitting as your spark plugs. Uh, we're gonna screw that in tightly and then crank the engine. But before that, there is one more thing we need to do on this Mustang GT. We do need to crack open the throttle to get an accurate compression test. Now you can do two things. You can pull your intake off, which is more work. Not really thinking about doing that because you have to jam something soft in there that won't get pulled in and you don't wanna damage your throttle body itself, the flapper. So what I do is go ahead and crack the throttle open underneath. You can kind of slide that out. And if you wedge something in there, and get it so it'll hold, you'll be golden. Now our throttle body is wedged open. Again, this is a challenge based on how the spark plug holes are set up on this engine, but whatever. We've done worse things. Well, that was completely zero fun. So I've got it actually locked in, got my compression tester threaded in all the way. we are ready to crank the vehicle. Obviously we've disconnected fuel and spark, so we're gonna go simply start the car. Make sure you do have electricity going. You, you are gonna need to start the vehicle. Or at least have it try to crank. And here we go, guys. You should see that compression gauge come up. Hopefully we're gonna see something along the lines of, you know, 120, 130 PSI. Let's give it a crank. That's a very healthy number right there. So we're looking at, yeah, we're on the 160 mark there. So that's pretty awesome. So 160 PSI in cylinder five. And now we simply repeat that process through all eight cylinders. So we'll reconvene when I'm done with the test and we'll take a look at all the numbers and see what we have.
Here's my expertly illustrated engine diagram for our Mustang GT. And as you can see, overall, we had a really consistent high compression test number results for every cylinder. And that's fantastic. That lets us know that our Mustang GT engine is running fantastically. No real issue at all to see there, especially on the passenger side bank of the V8. Those numbers are very consistent, very close. Now you can see cylinder eight does have a bit of an anomaly. It is pretty high, so that might indicate something going on there. But overall, I'd rather see that than a low number or a series of low numbers. So, you know, this test does take some time, a little tricky on this engine, especially with the aftermarket headers. But to know that our engine is in great health, I'm happy and I'm ready to move forward in figuring out what is going on with our fueling issue. Next up, I want to perform a real simple fuel pressure test on the Mustang GT just to see where we're at. To do this test, you basically just need to get yourself a universal fuel pressure test kit. You want all kinds of various fittings and arrangements so you can actually set it up correctly. Every car is slightly different. There's a lot of different Schrader valves and things, but you want to make sure you have the right fittings. The Schrader valve for the Mustang GT is located in the front of the engine on the passenger side. It has a screw-on adapter and is located on the front of the fuel rail. Once you get your pressure tester all arranged, it's time to go ahead and turn the key to the on position to allow the fuel pump to pressurize the system. When testing the fuel pressure, you want to do key on, engine off. You should be seeing between 35 and 45 PSI, and as you can see here, we're only seeing just south of 30 PSI. So we're not hitting the numbers we should be doing couple things I need to inspect now are looking at the fuel pressure regulator, make sure it's functioning correctly and good health. I also want to make sure the ignition timing is okay. I really have an issue with some of the work I'm going behind, so I'm going to check that and triple check the timing just to make sure we're still on. Also, I'm going to look at the math just to make sure it's clean and not, you know, old or not functioning also. So that's where I'm starting. We're not done with the fuel stuff yet, guys. After that stuff, I am going to send the injectors off to get professionally cleaned and flow matched, and we'll install a new fuel filter. So after today's work, at least we have a healthy engine, and we're starting to narrow down the cause of our rich running little pony here. See you guys on the next one.